Welcome to my sewing room. We have a beautiful show for you today. We're going to sew hearts. I love hearts. The first project I will share with you is one from our Martha's Gift of the Month Club. A beautiful heart, silk dupioni pillow, organza ruffle, and a beautiful lace heart, and then a machine embroidered heart right inside. Very easy to do. This is one of my favorite doll dresses that we've ever had on any of our television shows. This has little hearts all the way around the skirt and wonderful double needle pin tucks that go around each heart. I think that's one of the prettiest doll dresses that I have ever seen. The next little project is a precious baby outfit. This is a little baby top and as you can see there are little hearts and what is inside of those little hearts are, are feather stitches. Now this is a little diaper shirt and let me pull it up and show you that there's a little panty underneath that diaper shirt. What a sweet cool little outfit for a baby to wear in the summer. Another one of our uh, gift of the month club projects is this wonderful Really, really pretty, I think, table runner. It has hearts going in this direction, hearts going in that direction, and in the middle are some machine embroidered cut work, as well as some really beautiful flowers. So you see, hearts don't have to just be for little girls or for dolls. They can be for elegant table linens also. This is a pillow sham cover, actually. That ha it's of a beautiful pink fabric with hearts, lace hearts just stitched all over and some little leaves below the hearts where the hearts indeed look like flowers on this pillow sham. And the last dress is one of the ones from Jack and Jill and this is a beautiful collar with hearts and embroidery around the heart and then the skirt. I absolutely love this skirt. It has hearts upside down hearts right side up and the little hearts just fit inside of each other on the bottom of this beautiful big girl dress. Now we have a new technique for making lace hearts for you today. It is called pinless heart shaping. If you'll come along to the technique boards I'll share with you just how easy it is to do this. We have a brand new technique for you pinless lace hearts. As in any lace shaping, when you're going to do pinless lace shaping, you go ahead and draw your heart. We also have to draw the miter points, and I'm going to use the French insertion, French lace insertion as always. Now, I have come over here and started my pinless lace shaping. I'm going to show you that I have stabilizer, a tearaway stabilizer underneath here, and I'm going to zigzag or straight stitch or even decorative stitch around here. When I turn the corner, I'm going to simply come up like this, stitch all the way around the heart. Now, did you notice that I started at the top of the heart? When I shape, lay sticking pins in a board, I start at the bottom. But this time for pinless, I start at the top, and then I'll come all the way around here. When I get all the way around, I will stop and flip this miter under in the middle before I finish stitching right here. Now, you can see I have a little heart trouble. This heart is sticking out. By the, by the way, I do have to come in and fold in my bottom miter too, but that's really easy to do. French laces have a gathering thread built in. Now, I'm going to show you that when I pull that gathering thread in the French lace, it lays down just as flat and pretty as you please. On the heart, I'm going to pull this side with one thread, and I'm going to pull this side with another thread. I'll come in here and pin my miter at the bottom. I've turned it under, and the next step will be to come in and zigzag. I've already zigzagged around the outside. Then I will zigzag around the inside, and then I need to trim the fabric from behind the lace hearts, which is what I have done here. I have trimmed the fabric from behind the lace hearts, and now what do I do at the miter points? I have two miter points here and here. After I trim the fabric from behind, I zigzag over the miter points, and then in this case, I have trimmed away the little dart that we folded in when we made our miters. Now, if you will come along with me over to the sewing machine, I'm going to share with you just how easy it is to do this pinless heart lace shaping. 
We, on our Martha's Gift of the Month, we sent out a project and told, told people how to do pinless heart lace shaping. Well, most of these people had never done any lace shaping, so they just jumped right into the pinless. And when I told them that that was supposed to be the second step, jokingly, of course, they said, well, Martha, it was so easy, we don't ever intend to pin ours. Let's go over this once again. I would like to emphasize that you do start on pinless heart shaping. You do start at the top. Now, when you do it, when you do the other kind of lace shaping, you start at the bottom. But I'm going to just zigzag or straight stitch around the edge. When I come to the miter point, I'm simply going to hold it and zigzag or straight stitch or go ahead and do your decorative stitch all around, coming up into the top. Now, when I move into this top area, I stop stitching about an inch over and flip it under because I have to flip in this miter. As you can see, I've got a little heart trouble here, so I'm going to have to find a thread, and you know what I might do? I might just open up this center part before I flip it and go ahead and pull. I have to find a thread to pull, so I'm going to come in, and the thread that makes a scallop on the top seems to be the easiest one to pull. Now I'm going to make this heart trouble go away by simply pulling that thread and that is absolutely magic. It or That heart has laid down just perfectly. Now which one did I say was the easy one? You got it. The one that makes a scallop or a scallop on the top, whichever way you pronounce it. Okay, I found the thread. I'm going to pull it. It lays down perfectly now and what I'm going to do in the middle is to simply come in and turn it under and fold in my miter and then I'm now ready to zigzag the outside or rather the inside I'm sorry I've done the outside now what if you don't want to zigzag today's modern machines have beautiful 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 decorative stitches especially done with wing needle as a matter of fact some people call me Miss Wing Needle because I love wing needle stitching. I have chosen on this machine, I'm going to do my pinless lace shaping. I'm simply holding it as I go around and I have chosen a magnificent decorative stitch. It is not just a zigzag, it's a little easier just to do it with zigzag, but I am using what I call a Baby Daisy Wing Needle Entredeau Stitch. I'm simply moving around in a curve with my Baby Daisy, which is one of the most beautiful of the wing needle entredeau stitches. And when I get to a point where I need to move my lace around a little bit, I will get my shish kebab stick. You know I love a shish kebab stick. And I will hold it and sew straight just a little bit further. And then when I finish that little piece, and sometimes you might even need to pivot just a little bit on the heart. That's no problem at all. Just pivot a little bit, use your shish kebab stick, and I am sewing a magnificent baby daisy. And you know what? It's a little bit easier to sew this heart down just with a straight or a zigzag. But some people don't want to waste the time to have to go back and do the decorative stitch later, especially not wing needling because it's a little bit time consuming to tell you the truth. So they just go ahead and do their pinless lace shaping just working right on the fabric. Don't forget, you have to have a stabilizer underneath this fabric. Well, I guess you wouldn't have to, but I've always used a stabilizer, and I really do think with most machines you do have to. Okay, after I have finished my sewing, I come back, I trim the fabric, and I'll flip this over just so you can see. I've trimmed the fabric from behind the lace, and you do not have to finish that edge. I've made over 100 dresses. None of them have ever fallen apart. You just leave that raw edge because, believe me, you have the stitches in there. Then what do you do on this miter part? After you trim the fabric from behind, you come back and zigzag over the miter, zigzag over the miter, and as we have done on this part that we've already zigzagged, we indeed did cut out that little fold back. That's a question people ask me a lot. And that is all there is to doing pinless lace shaping. And now we have a beautiful doll dress for you. This is one of the most beautiful doll outfits I believe I've ever seen. It is featured on our 18-inch doll, Cecil Elizabeth, but this outfit fits many, many 18-inch dolls. As a matter of fact, I think just about all of them. This is a nightgown and a robe. 
look at these sweet little buttons that button it at the top. And this is, by the way, done out of a lavender Swiss Batiste. And the little sleeves have three rows of insertion with beading, a little bit of elastic in the bottom. And we're going to go down the front. And I want you to, well, let me just show you the side of this row. I'm going to turn her around a little bit. Isn't that a wonderful shape? And on this show, we've learned how to do curves and pinless curves. And although this isn't a heart, it is still the pinless curves. Now, I bet you thought all of the pretty work was done on the row. Well, wrong. There's her little nightgown. And by the way, she has on no shoes because she's all ready to go to bed. See, we have that beautiful little lace shaping on the front of her nightgown also, like the one over here on the outside of the row. Now, it isn't difficult to do this kind of lace shaping. I'm going to take you through this step by step. Remember, we learned how to do curves a few minutes ago with the lace heart. This is curves. It isn't a heart, but it's very similar to curves. This is a called a loop, and then this is a curve that almost looks like an ocean wave. First of all, you trace your design on your fabric. Then you begin to do your lace shaping. You see, here's a curve like the outside of a heart. This is very similar to the curve on a heart. You pull your strings, and that's uh, lace piece number one. Then I'm going to do lace piece number two. Now, I'd like for you to look carefully at this point and this point. We're going to make this what we call Celtic lace shaping because this piece of lace goes over the bottom piece, and this piece of lace slips underneath the top piece. And that makes it a little bit of a Celtic. It's going to look a little Celtic-y when we finish it. Now, when we zigzag this down, there's a little trick. And what do we do with this square piece, which we really want to be a round piece? Really isn't much of a trick, but I'm going to share it with you. Let me put my little inside back in there. In order to make this square piece a round piece, I'm first of all going to stitch a straight stitch around here, and then I will go back and just simply zigzag it like the rest of the lace that I'm going to stitch down. I will have to clip off those little pieces. So I stitch right over those pieces, and then I'll clip off the little pieces, and as soon as I get those little um, eyelashes there, which that will take care of that, now I have a beautiful curved piece. On the little dress, there was, la there was lace peeking out between the oval. So I'm going to take a pair of scissors and cut out the pink Batiste fabric from behind this oval. Here is what I'm going to make to stitch to put in behind that oval. I'm going to have two pieces of beading and a piece of insertion and ribbon run through that beading. Now, sometimes I forget to show people the simplest things to do in heirloom sewing. In order to get those laces butted together and attach the beading and the insertion, all in the world you do is just butt those two pieces of lace together and zigzag them. You can use any width of zigzag or any length as long as it will cover both of the headings of the lace. And the headings of the lace are those little strings that run up and down the side of the lace. That's all there is to butting two pieces of lace together. And that is what I have done here is but actually not two pieces, but I have butted three pieces of lace together. As you can see, the beading, the insertion, and the beading. Now, where am I going to put those three pieces of lace insertion? I cut out the center of the oval. I slipped that piece of beading and insertion and beading in behind there. And I'm going to come back, and I'm going to zigzag the inside. And then after I finish that, I will come in and cut away the bottom of the batiste, of the pink batiste. I will gather lace, butt it up to it, and zigzag the gathered lace. And those are the techniques I used for this beautiful doll dress. And now we have a hand embroidery stitch to share with you. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today my dear friend Kathy Neal. Kathy is one of the outstanding needle artists in the world today. She also has the privilege of being enrolled, enrolled in the certificated course of, for the Royal School of Needlework in London. Kathy, thank you so much for being here with us today. It's my pleasure, Martha. And today I have a sweet little pair of baby booties to share with you. There is a renewed interest in wool felt baby shoes 
Um, these were popular when I was a baby, Martha, and it's, I, I've noticed in several places there's, they're, they're showing them again, and they really are sweet. And this pair comes from Grandmother's Hope Chest, and that book is wonderful because these are so tiny, just perfect for the newborn baby, especially those with small feet. I had such, a tr such so much trouble finding shoes this small when Sarah was born because she had such tiny feet. Um, it, on a pair this small, you have you need really tiny embellishment, and I have chosen a perfect little flower, the little looped bullion daisy, and here you can see that it is just plain, embroidered with some lazy daisy leaves and a seed stitch dot for a little bud. Also over here on the strap, I've used the seed stitch dot again with the lazy daisies where they snap because we don't want to button a shoe on a wiggling baby. Um, over here, I've added one more little embellishment, a, a little freshwater seed pearl right in the center for an extra little decoration. Let me show you how I make these booties. Um, I actually use the wool felt and I use a rotary cutter um, with a pinking blade on it. You'll see it, it's scalloped here. And that's how I cut around the edges. For the perforations on the little baby booties, I use a 1 16th inch hole punch, and that makes the perfect little um, decoration around the top in each scallop. To make the bullion daisy, you'll see that actually it starts with a circle and these are intertwined, these outer petals that are made of long bullion stitches. And to make bullion stitches that long, and I've already started one here, I work around the edge of the um, circle that I drew. Now I'm using a straw needle here. And a straw needle is very long and has a small round eye so that it slides through all those bullion wraps perfectly. As you see, I've moved along and made long bullion stitches, and each new bullion stitch that you make begins right in the center of the last one. And I am going to pick up just a small amount. Let me get my glasses here. I pick up just a small amount of fabric right here along the circle, and I'm going to wrap this 25 times. That's why you need such a long needle. And if you didn't have that long needle, it would be very hard to keep loops, that many bullion loops on a needle. And as you see, it makes a nice long bullion stitch that I loop around. And I can also use, if I want to, a pin to hold that loop out while I tighten the stitch down. And then I simply shape it. I fasten it down by pulling the thread to the back. I can also take a little stitch out here, Martha, to keep the bullion down. And then I'm ready to make the next one by coming up at the midpoint again. And the center of this little flower can always be filled in, as I said, with a pearl or with some little French knots. Kathy, that is so sweet, and it's just so wonderful to have that little touch of hand embroidery on baby clothes. Kathy, thank you so much for being here. And now I have a beautiful quilt to share with you. I would like to introduce you to this beautiful heart quilt that we will be doing over the next two series of shows right here on Martha's Sewing Room. As you can see, the machine embroidery is cross-stitch. Now, I'm just going to show you some of these hearts. We've actually filled in each one of these hearts. This one is filled in with the machine embroidered cross-stitch. And as you can see, the sashings are done out of a machine embroidered cross-stitch. This heart has a Normandy lace shape in it with a diamond inside the heart and a lot of beautiful machine embroidery. This heart has a wonderful diagonal strips of lace and ribbons that have been inserted behind the heart. This heart is very interesting. It has stippling and then a wonderful little tiny machine embellished stitch, which almost looks like you have tatting stitched around the heart. 
This one has Crazy Patch. Oh, how I do love Crazy Patch inside the heart. This heart has a really pretty machine embroidery done on an organdy fabric, a real interesting technique we'll have later on in the series. This particular heart is Seminole patchwork inside the heart. This one has puffing and ribbons. That's a very fun technique and a very easy one. And this heart is a Madeira applique once again with machine embroidery inside the heart. So we'll take you through this quilt over the next number of weeks. To make a heart, as we've shown you a little earlier on the show, you trace the heart off and then you shape the heart and then you stitch the outside on all of these quilts. Now in order to put something inside this heart, we are going to have to cut away the actual fabric part. I've, I've done a partial trim here for you. So we're going to cut away the fabric so we have a place to insert the machine embroidery or the hand embroidery, whichever one you would like to do behind. To make the embroidered section to go inside the heart, you simply trace a line to, to place your embroidery, and I'm going to share with you a couple of ideas. If you are a mommy who loves little girls, you might want to do a mommy's helpers. This is a 1930s rendition of little girls dusting, and this little girl is sitting here embroidering. It has little dogs and dolls, and the little girl sitting there embroidering in her embroidery hoop. If you have a new baby or a christening or a confirmation coming up or a communion, you might want to do one with just elegant embroidery, such as these three crosses and the basket of pansies, which has the, the three pansies. Then a lot of people love to do Noah's Ark. That's one of my favorite motifs. And this one has the rainbow with the dove carrying the olive branch. And this has an ark. And this is the ark after the storm because the ark is settled down. That's really interesting. And we've seen a lot of beautiful things done with Noah's Ark. Now, after you embroider, whatever you're going to embroider on your extra piece of fabric, you slip that fabric in behind the heart. I believe we've got part of this stitched here. We do. You slip this fabric in behind, center your embroidery, and then pin it. And now you're ready to go ahead and zigzag or else do an extra trim, extra, oh, maybe machine entredeau or, or Madeira pin stitch or anything with a wing needle. You attach it to the heart, and that's the way you make a lace heart and fill it. And then this, the quilt has other embellishments with the sashings, but we're going to make this wonderful Batiste heart quilt for you this series. Now won't you come along with me to my attic? It is always so much fun for me to come up in my attic and share with you some of these beautiful clothes I've had the privilege of collecting over the last 20 years. This dress I bought at the Paris flea market. It's a very old dress, probably before 1900, because it has the high collar around the neck, the lace, the gathered lace, and the two laces butted together. This dress has some very unusual features which I wanted to share with you. The yoke has up and down pin tucks and lace insertions that go across the very top. Then there is a sideways yoke, which has beautiful Swiss embroidery in the middle, and then two pieces of insertion at the top and bottom. Now the very beautiful part of this dress, the bodice, as you can see, has tiny, 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 tiny pin tucks all the way across it in sets of five. Let me pull the sleeve over. You can see the sleeve also has pin tucks and sets of five all the way around the sleeve. And then the little sleeve has a beautiful piece of insertion, five more pin tucks, a piece of insertion, and a little tiny gathered ruffle. This mother or grandmother went to the trouble of putting a piece of fabric and making a little ruffle before she attached her lace. Now let's go on down to the skirt where I have another very unusual feature. It has pleats rather than gathers. And it has release tucks. Release tucks start right here and then stop. And then it is pleated, and we still have that beautiful lace insertion feature. On the bottom of this little dress, once again, we have insertion and little tucks, and the back is, has a lot of the very same details, which of course are perfectly exquisite. Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today. I've had so much fun, and I hope you have too. Most importantly, I'd like to invite you back next time.